Welcome to AP Calculus and we're going to review some limits from last year and we have four graphs of limits and the question is which one of these graphs have a limit as x approaches 1 of f of x in which the limit does not exist so I'd like you to answer that on the form take a guess look at these four graphs and see if you can figure out which one does not have a limit Okay, so let's talk about this for a second. The idea here is that if you were to trace this graph from both the left side and the right side, so if I were to trace the first graph, as x approaches 1, the two sides should meet up. They should be going to the same value. So in choice A, it definitely meets up. Okay, so let's look at choice B. Again, as I trace on the left side and the right side, again it meets up. None of us, there's a hole there. There's some strange behavior there, but the graphs on both sides of that hole still meet up, therefore the limit doesn't exist. D, kind of a similar idea. As I trace it from the left, right side and the left side, I can see that the graphs again match up, and so therefore the limit exists. Again, the answer is way up here. There's a hole there, some strange behavior, but the limit does exist. So now if you take a look at C, you can see that as the graph traces on the left side and the right side, now the graphs do not ma match up. Therefore, the limit does not exist. So the answer here would be C. Okay, let's explore graph C a little bit further here. Because this is one on which the graph, the limit did not exist. Remember, the left-hand tracing didn't match up to the right-hand tracing. Well, this is how we record that. We use what's called a one-side limit. This is a notation for a one-side limit. Limit as x approaches 1 from the left side of f of x. And, the, and we're going to compare that to the limit as x approaches 1 from the right side of the f of x. And in this case, if you notice, they are not equal. The left side actually goes to the value 1. The right side goes to 0. They are not the same. Therefore, we say that the limit doesn't exist, even though the one side limit does. So let's take a look at these same graphs now, but now let's ask, ask the question, which of the following has a limit as x approaches 1 of f of x equal to 1? So the idea is that as we trace it on the left side and the right side, we should be getting closer and closer to the value. If you notice, this particular graph gets closer to 2, not the answer we're looking for. We already looked at this one and realized that the left side and the right side doesn't even match up, so the limit doesn't exist, so it can't be this one. So let's look at A. Again, remember when I trace it from the left side as x approaches 1, and from the right side, I look at the y value that I'm getting closer and closer to, and sure enough, 1 is an answer. But if you notice, choice B, if I do the same thing, approach on the left side and the right side as x closest to 1, again I get closer to the y value of 1. So in this case, both A and D would be the correct answer. So that's how you do it with graphs. What do you do if you have equations? You may not necessarily have a graph to look at. How do you determine limits? Well, most of the time, the limits are getting by simply substituting your value in. So if I take x equals 4 and replace all the x's with 4, I get 4 squared minus 5 times 4 minus 4. 16 minus 20 minus 8, negative 8. Real simple. Substitution. And you should always do substitution first. First step, because that's the easiest to do it, and if you get the answer, you're done. Let's take a look at the next problem. So again, remember, so it should be substituting first. So when I replace it, both x, x with 4, and both the top and the bottom, you'll notice on the top I'll get 0, and on the bottom I'll get 0. And we know in math, one thing we can't do is divide by 0. But this is a unique situation. We get 0 divided by 0, which is called indeterminate. I'm going to run out of space here, sorry. Okay. Indeterminate means that there is an answer. We just can't determine it by substituting. We've got to do something else to the equation. So if I, substitution doesn't work, I'm going to have to try something else. 
Now if I go back to Algebra 1 here and look at this equation, this numerator looks like it might be factorable. I might be able to do something with that to simplify this equation. So I'm going to look at this equation as a limit at x approaches 4 of x minus 4 times x plus 9. Some of you may listen as a generic rectangle or box and diamond as you factor this equation. x minus 4. Well, notice here now I can actually cancel out that factor that's causing the divided by 0 problem. And now I can take that value here and substitute it into what's left. And so my limit then becomes 4 plus 9, which is 13. I've now canceled away the dividing by 0 problem. Some other examples, a little more complicated equation. Now factoring this would be a little bit tougher because it's a cubic equation. So this is where, if you remember from last year, synthetic division comes in handy. I replace, I put negative 2 out front, and I put the coefficients underneath. 1, negative 3, negative 8, and 4. If you remember synthetic division, you drop the first number down. 1, multiply, and add. Multiply, and add multiply and add, and this is usually a good thing in calculus when we will always get a remainder of zero. So if you remember the like division, this is now the equation. Let's see, start at x cubed, so when I do something like division, it always drops by one, so it's x squared minus 5x plus 2, and now I can substitute x equals negative 2 in there and get 16, and there's my limit. Next one looks like, wow, another fraction. Okay, so you think, oh, i got to do synthetic division, i got to do factoring, but watch here, when I replace x with 2, remember, you should always substitute first. If you notice here, there's no dividing by 0 problem. This is not 0. So this is a problem that doesn't require us to factor synthetic division. We can get by on just substitution. So I replace the x's with 2, and I get 4 plus 4 plus 5, 13, over 2 plus 1 is 3, and so there's my limit. Hope this helps you in determining limits both graphically and algebraically.